always got to check this because it never does it right the first time. The audio is never the right thing. Microphone. Yes. Never does the right thing. I, I plug it in and it's like, oh, you wanted to use the one that's on the laptop, didn't you? Yeah, that's what you wanted to use. Because obviously plugging in an external camera would be dumb. <laughs> The microphone too. Actually, is, we'll use that external microphone. microphone. Who uses that? Anyways. The best approach to a parking problem is AK forty seven. No, actually, it's very much, much the opposite. I think the first thing I do is Am I going to be screwing you up? What about this? Oh, well, it works better. But, uh, Visuals. The problem is the screen moves a lot, so oh, that's true. Not a good tripod. Yeah. yeah, it's already live, so it's kind of should have been done before we did all this. <laughs> uh, now I'm just making everybody at home dizzy. And I have a uh, what's reverse? Yes, it is, but it will it will turn out fine in the actual broadcast. Sorry about that. Um, I have a real tripod I can give you. But this is actually better than the old tripod. The old tripod I was using before, so that's why I have this. Right. So think about Wi-Fi. It's kind of like I actually got a haircut, so I don't know.
So but we were planning to have a December party, uh, all day party, probably at Nissan, like it was last year. We got to go to that house. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but it will, I think it's a small fee, five bucks or ten bucks. Um, this the food isn't, isn't free. Um, but we had like 120 people come last year. It's a really big event. Yeah, it's catered. Right. Yes. It's a nice event. What's that, Bruce? On the party last time, I don't know how you work it or not. It was the first time we serve or is it members first? And then we, we actually kept this opinion. Um, it would just be really nice if, we, if everybody wanted to come and sign up. And, you know, yeah, there's a little weeks in advance. Or, the problem is it fills up real quick. Yeah, it does. But so I didn't know whether originally we had for 50 people. Right. Then we had 80 people sign up, so we expanded it to 100 people. Then we had 120 people sign up, so we expanded it to 150 people. But the problem is the catering. We need people to sign up early so that we know how much to get. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that. We could have 250 people, I think. I think they could handle that. But we have 100 people sign up, and only 110 show up. That's okay. Yeah, so that's a big meeting, and the EAA has to be meeting. So, um, joint meeting. Yeah. We've worked like, together so much. Uh, I'm going to also wait. Uh, Maggie's across the back room here. Um, setting up teachers. So, if you guys want to serve that, I announced for those of you who didn't see it previously at the logo, we got this ice image. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, you know, making fossil fuels a thing of the past. Ice age is coming with internal combustion. It's, 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 it's coming, the ice age is coming to an end. Originally had a different design, but this one was a little bit more friendly. So if you want one, we have them $15 in the back. All, all sizes, but only this color, sorry. Only this color is available. Um, and we also have uh, uh, purple shirts from uh, the rally as well. One rally shirt. Um, anyway, so uh, rally recap. Uh, I'm sorry about sound to MVP. Uh, that's volunteer MVP. Emails a problem list that I didn't have half demons. So I couldn't send it out. Um, and as far as stats goes, we have about 1,500, slightly less than 1,500 by my count attendees, but it's close to my estimate. Um, 100, 100 plus test rides, people going around, 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 and all the different vehicles we had. Uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how many vehicles we have, but this is the report I have. Um, we had 20 plus vehicle charges total. And then on display, at least 15 uh, display vehicles, which is pretty good. If you look at other other events, with the exception of Los Angeles, who's still sticking in my ear that they did better than we did. Well, that's um, just EA. EA sponsored vehicle, the EA sponsored vehicle, so that will be a lot more than um, I actually counted 15, but if there more showed up from the quiz, I didn't get a chance to look at the end. So if it's 15 plus, because I was pretty sure it was more than 15. It might have been 25. Um, what's up, George? No, I just thought it was kind of nice of it. To show that there are a few more home built yeah. cars, you know, especially the guy with the uh, uh, Cobra. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool. It's good to see they get actually built. The original was off. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what approval meant. I'm sure I had some of them <laughs> down there at the bottom. And I don't have my last slide because I didn't do that slide. That was supposed to be the one presenting. For Kevin, I think it's a chance to come here. Um, anyway, so we, uh, I think we had a pretty good show. I was expecting it to be actually a little bit smaller than this, than it ended up being. I was expecting 12 total exhibitors, and we had 26 total exhibitors, which actually technically beats the number of exhibitors from the previous year, even though we didn't have a world record. But the world record is still on as of right now. Um, but I'm going to give you guys warning now, and I will remind everyone in November um, that I'm, I can't actually be president next year. Um, we may not be living in uh, the Bay Area next mm -hmm. year, so I can't continue on holding the position as much as I'd like to help out. So, um, 
It's not because I'm going to die. It's because well, I'm, not, I'm moving away. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so Kevin, if you're ready, we can bring you up. You have an HDMI cord? Uh, not a cord. I <clears throat> just take yours. Yours will be in those. I mean, can I just use your cord? Right no, that's the thing. You have an HDMI. Yeah. Wait, wait, you do. Okay. Wait, you said a cord. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Did they allow these Macs to plug in here? No, it's like one of every single kind of laptop. Uh, let's see. What's that word mean? C H O L E R? Uh, anger. Frustration, irritation, everything. Yeah, let's see. You know, uh, I was trying to be clever in my wording there. Uh, you were. <laughs> like cholera, you, you have as a baby, or a baby's under cholera. It's, uh, you mean cholera? You mean cholera? I have raised a little well, see, this is you're, you're my uh, trial audience for this presentation, so perhaps I need to change my alliteration. No, no, it's ready. It is no, I'm positively for a couple of years. Mm. That's true. I'll well, see. I've already got you engaged, so maybe that actually works. Common <clears throat> corporate charging call. And uh, I'm Kevin. I uh, work at Yahoo. This project was done for Yahoo, but uh, as a hobby, I wasn't actually paid by Yahoo directly for doing this. So um, I worked there, and I was as frustrated as everybody else is by the parking situation and trying to share uh, chargers around for the office. And came up with my solution. So it's a hot topic in the news right now. The uh, frustration companies are having with electric car charging. Of course, there's way more cars than there are physical chargers at all the different locations of the major companies here and it causes a lot of frustration. So um, there's too many cars, not enough uh, chargers. Uh, people are supposed to move their cars when they're done charging, but of course everybody's very busy and uh, doesn't always do so. You can't figure out who's parked in the spots where you're trying to park to contact them to ask them to move or to send them notes saying they've been parked for too long. Um, it's also difficult to encourage good behavior. People have no motivation really to move their cars when they're not charging. It's, uh, wouldn't it be nice if you did this? Um, it's difficult and unpleasant to penalize people who are not playing by the rules of moving their cars. Um, and it's kind of the wild west right now. And there's, there's not much rules to it. At Yahoo, at least, all of the uh, charging is totally free which encourages people to charge even if they really don't need it. Um, so all the chargers are always full. Yes? Two questions. Do you have non yahoo employees come over and reach you? Uh, no, because in order to get the car from EV Connect to start the chargers, you need to be an employee. That's the deal anyway, but uh, we don't ever revoke it for people who have been fired or have left voluntarily. Um, you can get a friend's account, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's certainly ways around it. So, and I may have solved that problem as well. Yes? I have a question on more of the problem still. Uh -huh. um, so are people driving more than their 80 miles a day of charge, or most people don't have charges at home, or why do people need to charge so much during the day? I think because they're cheap. Okay. So <laughs> it's, it's because it's free at yeah. work and not free at home. Yeah, that's my theory. I haven't done a formal survey of this, but I think because it's free and there's still the charge anxiety, the range anxiety, am I going to make it that figure while I'm at work, I might as well top off. 
Um, Most of them do think it's something off. I think so, but some people do really need it. For example, I used to commute 35 miles each way to Half Moon Bay, and I absolutely needed it. I get to work with 49% charge. Um, but I think a lot of people just want to make sure they're topped off. Yes. Um, Kevin, are you familiar with the term for everyone here? Tragedy of the Commons. Uh, I've heard that mentioned. Yeah. Tragedy of the Commons was an expression. Um, some early economics. Uh, said, you know, towns used to have a common green. They were built around, and anyone could graze their um, pasture animals there. And the tragedy of the Commons is people would graze in the shared common space before using their own land, mm. and of course the commons was destroyed, <laughs> because like, you, like in this situation, everyone wanted it free, Right. and exactly. they were ruining it for everyone. Yep, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that for sure here, so, um, and you know, there's the, the carrot versus the stick approach, so we, we talked about through angry email chains and so forth that work, uh, how do we fix this problem? Well, we can leave nasty notes for people, that's fine, they just come from up the other way though. Uh, blocking violators, do you park your car behind them and make them come and confront you and explain to you why they've been parked all day and not charge you, or why they're parking their not like a car and not like a spot. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you can revoke their charging privileges, that's a gray area. Uh, I think the biggest solution to this is start charging for charging. I mean, if it's a buck an hour, or let's say it's a buck for the charge day, whatever it is, if there's some charge to it, um, that would probably fix the problem. Except how would we do it for a Sure. Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever it is. And I think that would probably solve the problem. But now, if you've been giving something away for free, and now you want to start charging for it, and actually with a company like Yahoo trying to do the accounting around something like that, would be an idea. It would probably cost them more to do that than it is to give it away for free. So um, I proposed that solution and uh, they didn't go for it. We can all, all rant on some message board and email this and tell everybody how bad everybody else is. That really doesn't get anywhere. And then there's the visual injustice of you know letting the air out of people's tires or decorating their cars or you know, something along those lines. You know, it's a picture instead of a handicap symbol, there's an electric car charging symbol. And um, that's all fine, but it's a lot of work. And it really doesn't encourage people to drive electric, which is what we're trying to do here. This is a, a nice thing to do, but a nice thing for the environment. And if we make it so we're penalizing you all the time, it's, it's not going to be very much fun. So um, instead, I came up with a solution that's I won't say it's revolutionary, it's just made sense. But this is basically the situation at Yahoo. This is one of our one line of four in one parking garage of cars. And it's always full. This was at four o'clock in the afternoon. I took this picture, and there's actually a spot there. But most of the time, there's no spots there. 150 EV drivers, approximately. Maybe 56 parking spots, and only 35 chargers. So we're always rotating the cars around. Um, most people will move their cars when they're done. Uh, maybe half the people. A lot of people know. People are not going to be they're actually trying to make money for Yahoo. I understand that. Or, you know, it's not their job to move cars around. So. Um, but still, you've got to make it available for everybody. And you know, my back of the napkin math here was that at least 800 bucks a day is wasted just engineers Having to take time out of the day to move cars, it's probably twice that. Really. Uh, this is a very conservative estimate. So, uh, one thing I propose also is well, what about a valet system? I know that Facebook has a valet moving cars around. And, um, yeah. And, and actually, economically, it makes sense. I'm like, all right, it's only 15 bucks a day to move cars around. Well, there's insurance, there's this, there's that. So I was told by the parking director at Yahoo that it would be like 12 grand a month or something like that to have a valet service. I think that's a gross cooler estimate. But it also goes into uh, if you provide this for the electric car people, and then the non electric car people say, oh, well, why do they get the special privilege of these uh, valets? Why doesn't all of us? I want almost have that. And uh, I couldn't sell that. And then I found out later that. Yeah, the offices in LA do have valets. 
large amount. So uh, that's a, a matter I wasn't going to look at it. So anyway, uh, our facility is serviced by EV Connect, which is a small company that does mostly corporate and uh, uh, like for cities and stuff like that, they do charge services. And this is the app that they give us. Um, you see a flip on the screen here, which is basically like, this is one garage, another garage, another garage, and that's basically the level of depth we get, as well as a list of charging, chargers that are available or not available. And they're randomly numbered throughout, so it's not really possible to tell which charger is where. Um, most of them also don't have a key fob on the chargers where you can't uh, start then uh, you mostly have to do it with your phone and the connection is better. So it's a real pain. Um, they are cell phone repeaters and such, so you can get very good at it. Um, so it's always driving to work in the morning, trying to figure out which space is available. And of those spaces, which ones actually have chargers that are available. If I get there early enough, I usually don't have all the spots are full, and then I have to figure out. During the day, I try at random to see if I can find any spot. So my solution is communication. I believe that is going to help most of this problem. People are inherently good, especially EV drivers. You know, we're all trying to be friendly to one another and help the environment. So we're, people aren't generally trying to screw up other people, I don't think. Uh, so mostly, let's, let's be into that. Um, we share the same problem. Um, Let's help each other out. I'm just going to put a picture that could be the. Um, we have the information aids on. We can't, I can't even just share the information about which spots are available and which ones aren't. And we can talk to each other about coordinating. Maybe we can encourage good behavior. And also, a little bit of the stick approach is we we'll eliminate the anonymity. If you're parked there, we'll know who you are. If you have rights to use the system for free, the trade off to that is give us your information. Tie your license plate to your email address. And that's basically what I've come up with here. So instead of the app that we're provided where we get just a list of spots at random, basically, and have to figure out where they are, I came up with a graphical layout of each of the lots. I got to see where they are, if the spots are in use or not, whether the uh, EDSEs are in use or not. And um, if in this case, they're plugged into a car, but that car is the charge. Uh, the indicators on the three different brands of EDSEs we have at Yahoo are impossible to figure out if the car is actually done or not. So this tells you if, uh, if they're done or not. Not impossible, but they all need to. The map is updated every two minutes. And for me, it gives you the competitive charging advantage. So me versus me using this app versus somebody who doesn't have it won't know that in the garage here, there's actually one space available that's somebody's plugged into but not using and I could probably grab that if I wanted to. Just driving by, you're not going to be able to tell that. So this encourages everybody to use this tool in order to find their parking in the morning. It's visual, it's simple, not a lot of bells and whistles here, at least not yet, trying to make it so this is something you can use without a manual, without any training, without anything. It's just easy. Um, red means in use, yellow means plug into a car but not actually charging, and blue is some kind of an error condition. Uh, in this case, this charger is broken and I won't come up with another symbol for that. Is there a question yet? How do you get the data? Uh, so EV Connect has an API that they've given me access to, so I can just call that and get the status on every charger in their random order, and then I put it in a visual order that makes sense here. Um, ChargePoint and others, almost all of them have some kind of API you can get to whether they'll give it to you or not to check the status on their stations. And in this case, all of these stations are cell phone connected, cell phone network connected, so they update their status every two minutes. Um, let me show you in action. Taking a risk here in a live channel, but uh, this is what the lot looks like right now. The screen refreshes all by itself every two minutes. 
You can see a couple of more snaps over on Saturday here. These two spots are broken. This one here is still broken. Um, I can get to the uh, other lots on the other side of the street. See, these are all available, except for this one that appears to be broken. So it's worth somebody taking a look at that charter and seeing if there's something, there's something wrong and calling the company that makes these to get it fixed. Now, what I've also come up with in here, and I have not combed this information to make it safe for the public, but to show you how this works, these are all of the chart, these are all the people at Yahoo that are registered, have officially registered themselves to be charging. And you can look up very quickly by license plate to see their actual phone number and email address. And this is me in this case. Does everybody have to be registered? Yes, and that's the well. To use my system, they do. So that's the that's the carrot that I'm giving out. If you want to use this great feature, you have to have your license plates registered. And this also encourages people that have new cars that haven't gotten the plates yet to get them as quickly as possible. I'll give them a temporary password license plate, like change me or I'm a big door or something like that, to encourage them to change their license plate. And this is. There is a login. I've, I've gone around that for this demo, but there is a login for this page. So to get through this, you have to be logged in. Yeah. Regarding the license plate, what about, uh -huh. what about privacy? That's a lot of stuff here. Oh. Right. You didn't leave that up there very long. Right. Well, that's uh, that's what I mentioned. I, I have not sanitized this for public viewing. So this is for people that are employees of Yahoo. These are only their employee. Their employee email address which is not the person. Mm -hmm. It's optional to give your, your phone number or not, but um, that's really powerful. Phone number means, hey, your car's on the phone. Right. Yeah. We encourage people to do that, yeah. <clears throat> and mostly, <clears throat> sorry, Yahoo pays for your cell phone. So, you know, we could actually encourage people to, well, if company's paying for your phone, you have to have it listed here. And I believe that's the case with our corporate directory. So even if they don't want to list it here, you can look them up by email address and find the phone number on our sure. internal systems. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So how many stations do you have? How many ports? I think there's about 36 total six ports. In mm -hmm. part. I'd say about 150. Not everybody charges every single day. Um, they're, not everybody comes to work every day, you know, people work from home, things like that. But for the most part, there is a very big demand. But it's seriously oversubscribed. Yeah. Well, it's it's the problem of you know feeding the pigeons in the park here. So you've given this food away for free now, and now all these people have bought electric cars because it's so cheap to drive them. And now there's too many pigeons, and if you stop feeding them, there's going to be a problem. The pigeons are going to start dying off. In this case, nobody will die, but a lot of people are on electricity. Um, this is the uh, license plate lookup screen sanitized, where I can leave it up here a little bit longer. The, um, at least to start with, the, your password is your license plate number. And I'll probably make it so you can change that, because of course, well, you can look up and find somebody else's license plate and log in as them. Mm -hmm. I'm also depending still on the goodness of people not to do stuff like that, but you know. Um, I'll also be able to track, once people are using this login, I'll be able to see how much use the system is actually getting, how popular it is. How long has it been rolled out? Um, in pre-alpha testing for probably about two months, uh, rolled out to the public about two weeks. And uh, so far, I can just tell that the angry email list has gone down from at least uh, three or four a week to maybe one. Not a not a definitive test, but I can just tell that things seem to be going smoother, at least to start with. And I haven't rolled out all of the features that I plan to. So I think the most powerful thing is being able to message other drivers easily and quickly through the system. Like, your car is done charging, please move, or I'm looking for a charge, can you let me know when you're done? I started your charge, all of these things here. And, and I can come up with any number of pre canned messages. Yeah. The second one from the bottom message security, do you actually come that you start security to call a tow truck? Um, yeah, but it won't be call a tow truck. It'll be leave them a formally nasty note from security, not just from your hello EV driver, but yeah, the security will come around. And if they see repeat offenders, they'll 
want you to have it do appropriate things to you. Well, there are some in the uh, guidelines. Yeah, they're, they're all, I mean, a little bit, but you know, mostly they'll just get bothered until they don't do it anymore. I think most of the time it's innocent types parking, but maybe not. So, yeah, that. Um, suggestion to have the security messages uh, it's maybe parked in the easy spot, not charging, like my club here. Yeah. Some people treat it as a reserved space rather than a charge station. Right. And it could be ignorance, but it could be laziness too. So that's that's definitely something we'll add here too. Not only that, I can personally message them, tell them that. I can log how many people have messaged this particular person for this offense. And maybe But their thing isn't registered in the security. No, that's true, yeah. Well, if you don't have a hang tag in your car saying you're a registered EB. Yahoo EV driver, you can be, you can, you can be towed. So, not even an EV car, not charging, sitting in the spot without register, you can be towed. Yeah. Um, why don't you just put in a row of 200, 110 volt plugs and uh, bring your own level one charger? It's going to take all day to charge up any. Yeah. Location in the 
this group of chargers, let's say, right here. So tell me when one of these four is available in a yellow or green state. Um, or to message the group in general, let's say, like, um, where a driver can easily notify the rest of the people that I'm vacating a spot and see one come again or see two, whatever the other is. First level or second level of the garage. And um, to alert drivers when their charge is complete. So there, the EV Connect system will do this right now, software that starts the charger. Um, but it's flaky and not doesn't work great. And also, in a lot of cases, people plug in other people's cars and see the charge board is open, they're pulling out, you plug in somebody else. But you start them with your account. Well, you be notified when their car is not charging, which is just a waste of time. So, in this way, if you start the charge with my software coming soon, you can say, I'm Kevin, but I started Wes's charge, and I just text him by the license plate number, and then he's notified of the charge. Starts that way, computes. and then also I don't have to go back into the car and see that the nice port fairies have plugged me in. I'll know exactly when I got plugged in and when I'm finished. Um, and uh, you know, any any number of additional alerts can come and happen here. I'm thinking even like a ticker at the bottom of the screen that goes by saying "I just got vacated in C2." So if you're actually watching this thing, you'll see messages come across. Um, and maybe you can maybe make it to a game, you know, if you unplug your car within 30 minutes of it being done charging, then you get five points. Give points to uh, plugging in somebody else's car, being a nice group fairy. Um, one point for informing people you've plugged your spot. Any number of things to get people's competitive nature and uh, make it a little more fun. Um, these are all things that I definitely don't have time to do, but I'm hoping I can convince other uh, people at Yahoo to contribute code to get all this going. And I just said, no negative points. That gets all into I got to be a referee and say, yes, this is an offense or not an offense. Like, you can only get positive points. And there's no negative points except to show up on the board as famous ED partners. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I made this. I will be making this completely configurable, so this will work with ChargePoint or EV Connect or anybody else, and any parking lot of any size, and uh, make it work for yourself. It's 90% there, just need to finish that. Um, another idea is that on your phone, you may have like an OCR, or character recognition, so instead of having to type in somebody's phone number, I just scan the license plate with my phone, and it goes beep like a, like a barcode, and, then I can message that person. All that software is out there, it's just a matter of integrating it. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'd like to put an indicator next to each of the spots. This has been charging for three hours, for example. If I know he's been charging for three hours, he's probably going to be done soon. Or the spot's been available for 30 minutes, well, I know probably when I get there, it'll be gone because <laughs> somebody else has been empty for that long. Um, another really handy feature would be, and probably will make require making this into a native app, but being able to queue these messages and send them offline. So there's very little cell phone coverage, if any, in the garage, and uh, it's often difficult to start your charge. But if I could say, start my charge, put my phone in my pocket, walk inside, when it gets a good Wi-Fi connection, the charge will actually start, that would be really handy, as well as sending the messages. Uh, yeah? Another suggestion would be to have, have someone who's plugged in um, be able to say how long I need, even if I don't want a full charge. But, uh, yeah, I want two hours. Then, then you can unplug me if necessary. Right. Yeah, that would be great too. And especially if we can mount a tablet or something in the garage that says, "Hey, the person in spot this says he'll be done at two o'clock." So I know even if I'm still charging at two o'clock, somebody can pull my plug out, plug it somewhere else. Yeah. Would reservations for any sort of system, or is, is that something that would help or hinder um, the goal? It would, but it adds a, a big level of complication. So let's say I've reserved um, <coughs> spot 36 for charger, okay, let's see that number there, C24. I've reserved that for noon, that's mine. Or what if somebody is plugged in there? Or uh, what if somebody's blocking all the spots and I can't get in there? Um, 
if everybody plays by the rules, then it would probably work. But uh, that, that was a problem that uh, the charge point had made a point about. They have the ability to create reservations on all of their charging stations. But the reason they've all but ceased doing it um, and almost turned off the feature is because of the un incredible un in unlikelihood that uh, the charger will actually be available when you need it. So if it's locked and someone parks in that space and they need to charge because you didn't get there in time, it just causes this huge charge rage issue. So it, <laughs> as much as they like it, they don't have the manpower to handle that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin and I actually encountered this when we when we first looked at doing something similar along the lines of what he's already done. Um, so as, as nice as people want the reservation, the reservation is a belief that, like at a restaurant or on an airplane, you have a reserved seat. Well, what if someone else gets there before you, or just two seconds before you? You don't have it anymore. Yeah. It would be possible. Reservations don't work without a placement. Yes. Right. In, in, yes. in a case where it's a, a parking garage with an attendant or something that can yeah. move cars around, then that would work. So. Yeah. And it's certainly something I've considered, <laughs> like uh, maybe for do a pilot program in a certain lot and see if reservations would work. Do you often have the problem of chasing after an open spot and then getting there and it's not yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, certainly. So the, the magic secret ingredient to making all this work way better would be actual parking space sensors where I can see here's a spot available and a charger available and getting Because um, you can see that, for example, a spot is available, a charger is available, but they very well could be no open spots. Since they're all clustered together, did you have like a, a webcam and you just go to that? Yeah. <laughs> right, we've considered that, except uh, yeah, who wants to, the electrician wants to charge like 10 grand to put in an outlet for plugging power into this webcam. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no Wi-Fi out there, so then we need the Wi-Fi out there and then all of this. So people have look, looked into like ultrasonic parking sensors, like you see in Santana Row, where every spot they have sensors. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just a lot of bureaucracy in that. Um, it's weird because it's the same thing in my office when we look to just just put in a, a badge reader for a cage, five thousand dollars to for the technician to come out and install one badge reader, which costs four hundred bucks. What's that? Power, Power Ethernet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's all possible. Somebody still has to run Ethernet. So yep. Yep. Uh, we thought about like. I can even you know, charge a lithium battery that's going to last a week and just swap them out every week. And that would be fine. Still, there's it would have to be a camera that has uh, cellular network ability because there's no uh, there's no in internet out there. It's kind of funny in a place like Yahoo, they wouldn't have internet even in the garage, but they don't. So, yeah. So, uh, and it all becomes the cameras also become a security issue. Like uh, I don't want people seeing where I'm going. I, it's it's going to happen. It's going to come eventually, and it'll be everywhere. But now it's it's been a hard sell. Um, <coughs> yeah, the, the camera integration we just talked about, the offline thing. There's any number of features that can be added to this, but so far there's only one need to add all these features. And I made this very simple and easy to uh, add on to. But no, not there yet. And um, I will have this project up on a public GitHub if anybody uh, wants to code. For everybody to get to right now, it's open source, but only to Yahoo, it's on Yahoo's internal system. Um, I want to write connectors to work with ChargePoint, the Juicebox guys. Um, they all have APIs. It's just a matter of writing connectors for them. Uh, integrate the cameras and parking sensors, but my whole goal of this is making this as easy as possible. There needs to be no manual, easy to use. As soon as you turn it on, you know what it does. Uh, I've looked at other features like a graph that pops up of the energy usage of a particular station so you can see when it's tapering off to know when that station is almost done, and that would be nice too. Uh, but it's all got to be like super intuitive, work on a desktop as well as a mobile phone. Um, and. Uh, work well. This is a screenshot I've got of this working on a screen on a Tesla. Uh, the website comes up just fine. It's not a great picture, but you can see the general idea. On the big central display of the Tesla, this looks pretty cool and it's useful and updated itself every two minutes. So 
while you're driving in, I could say, well, there's two green spots here. While I'm driving, I want to aim for this general region. Uh, there's two greens here and two greens here. If I can park here or here, I have a pretty good chance of getting a charge, uh, even by the time I get there. I don't want to try to park always. I don't want to try to park down here because these are the only two that reach, and these are both full right now. Um, well, maybe they drive from the nest over there. Right. They should be able to make it up. Well, you know, you can't really. You could say, like, if you only charge if you really need to charge, that's hard to enforce. Well, what if they need to drive to LA tomorrow? They need to charge. So I can't say just because you're a Tesla, you're not allowed to charge. That's kind of all the stores in between. You can see the spots becoming available and unavailable during the course of the day. This is part of the time last picture of the garage in action. So these people with the basement ones open up and then they are fully empty. So what is the blue? Blue means it's broken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to do like a hash out pattern or maybe a circle with a line through or something. That's good. Yeah. Something much more intuitive, but I appreciate that. So you're waiting for a charge to take most of the needs that are constant. The leaves definitely do take it. Out of 2013, it does, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's not definitive, but it would be helpful. Yeah. Um, I'll share this presentation. After this, you know, I sanitize the data so that you can that again. There's a couple of good recent articles in newspapers about uh, corporate charge rage. But they didn't use the term charge rage. Uh, they didn't, no. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was that phrase that started the whole discussion. Yeah. Uh, when you figure it would be good, that would be a good newspaper word. Yeah, that was George Bezos' uh, phrase. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And there they started talking about Jack Brown's uh, hangers to be uh, ready to uh, quickly unplug or how to unplug the hangers. Um, and I've given out about, I don't know, 30 or 40 of those. Yeah, they're not used very much. So, <laughs> it's a great idea. It needs to be a way to make it a little more effective. So. Uh, and I also want to say, check out my website even longer. I've been able to take the data from Leaks 5 Pro and put it into a website to be able to visualize all of the data that it's giving you so you can see how your trips are doing. For example, this was a 28 minute trip. I used 31 units of charge, etc. This is very good for taking all of your trips. I have 500 or so trips in my system, 513, to be able to analyze my energy usage for all of my different trips. Maybe taking different paths to work, see what the difference in charge consumption is. Was there a difference in uh, the weather that day? Was I going more uphill than downhill? I don't know. Uh, this is all freely available. You know, if you'd like access, you just go directly to leaflogger.com and sign up with your account. That is just something. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, I don't know how um, quality those license plates and your apps you're talking about, but yeah. have you considered treating QR codes? Right, and, and I've thought of that. That's and it's super easy. It's just a matter of there is already a unique identifier on every single car. So why add another sticker that I don't know where it's going to be on the car and this and that license plate is totally standard. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't experimented much with these uh, license plate readers, but it's an open source project to do this, and there's actually a system. A cloud based system out there that will take any camera feed and give you a lot of every license plate it sees. So I think it works pretty well. And even, you know, like the Golden Gate Bridge anymore, that's all they do is look at your license plate and send you a charge. And I think they've got it down pretty well. Poor lighting in the garage, et cetera. I don't know, but I definitely want to see how well it works. 
Any other questions? Yeah. Questions specific to our so I'm happy to. And virtual is for everybody. Yeah. And and Yahoo has three original vehicle spots that are not charging spots, so you need to be hard to go. Yeah. But very often they Yeah, it was before my time that they were added, so I don't know, but I think that it helps a little bit, but they're always full and they're not like only park here after you've already charged or you're waiting to charge. It's always um but I'm hoping the communication aspects of the system will be able to let you message a specific person to say, I see you're done, can we swap spaces? I'll leave my non EV space drive a cone in there for them. They'll come around, I'll park in their electric spot, they'll leave, take the cone out, bring it back tomorrow or something. So get a bunch of small traffic cones. So we can do that kind of swapping and ensure that the non EV space is available. Because I think that's another reason people don't move is. They're all full. All those spaces are completely full. I just want to go park and move out. Um, that that's definitely an issue lost. I now we've just added 915 kilowatts of solar, and of that order, it's going to be the parking spots to be the solar. So um, once that happens, the parking, uh, EV parking tensions will go down for a little while until everybody buys more electric cars. A good problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. So you can basically have a, some sort of matching algorithm that people could say they're interested in electric charge, but they're not, they don't have a spot yet, but they have a non EV spot. And then yeah. match people up when they're done and say, you know, you're done and we already have a mobile spot for you. And yeah, this person wants to charge this spot with them. Right, exactly. That would, that would be really nice. And let's say, well, you have five minutes to respond. We say, I've got a charging spot for you, but this person's stuck in the meeting and can't swap with you. Well, go to the next person after five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'd love to implement something like that. And now, if you have the identity of all the chargers or all the EV drivers in your system, that kind of messaging is easy to do. Um, without that, it's nearly impossible. This is something actually that we we talked about. Remember when we we're discussing the possibility of queuing? Um, when Kevin was going back and forth between Half Moon Bay and, and Sunnyvale, uh, he had to get obviously he had to get a, a charge every single day. But we were looking at like priority. Um, if you know from the system that you travel a long ways every day, that person should have top priority depending upon how far they need to go to get home. Do they have to have a charge to get home? Yes. How much charge do they need to get home? This much, at least half, um, uh, or at least 50% more than, than they came with. Um, then that person would get a, a set priority over everyone else. So like, if you're just driving from South Sunnyvale, you don't need a charge to get home. You might be going somewhere else after, but your, your round trip trip, your round trip to and from work doesn't require a charge. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm not saying it. They're, they're, that's the, the problem that Jack Brown's um, uh, ice holes uh, page uh, demonstrates that people who drive EVs think that just because it says EV on the spot means they get to park there, even if they don't need a charge or if their car can't even charge in that spot. Which they um, have to figure out that first EV adoption. Right, right. Well, the, we're, we're giving you this space, but but I'm talking about for corporate. I'm talking about for the for Yahoo. They can control it. We can't control it outside. But but so God, they can. say, well, I'm the VP and I've been at Yahoo for 20 years and I'm that making $250,000, so I ain't You said something about this stuff was put in before your time. I remember George talking about that exactly happening. Yeah, privilege. And but but and then this comes into if you start like queuing people's priority, like, well, I only have to drive 15 miles, but I have to go to a very important client meeting and I'm the VP. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why that's a really touchy area to get into. Can you talk about how facilities and how management is embracing or not embracing not only this, but EV charging you know, at Yahoo? Yeah. The facilities um, are the receptive, obviously, they took some things that they Well, they haven't put anything. It was up to me to do this thing. So they put in the chargers, I mean, but it was up to me to, to make this more usable. Um, they're receptive to it, and anything that saves employee time and waste, reduces the waste of time around us. They're receptive to. So far, they haven't given me a promotion or a raise or uh, <laughs> any kind of stipend to uh, still part of my project. But, you know. yeah. I got a question about what about hybrids? 
plug in hybrids. Um, I mean, plug in hybrids. They don't really need to plug in. They have gasoline yeah. engines, right? Right. Right. Well, and that's I mean, yeah. That's a little bit of an area of tension because yes, I mean, like a Prius is like Prius C, which gives you 13 miles to a charge. Does right. a Prius C need to really charge up? Right. And do they need to be parked in the spot all day yeah. long, which right. they are? So, yeah. Um, but I hate to say that anybody has more rights than anybody else to. Yeah, but you know, hybrid. And it says right. EV. Right. right. Regardless, it's just a Let's question. Say hybrid markets and right. EV part. Yeah. Well. Well, I don't consider it's something to EV. interpretation, right? <laughs> well, I don't yeah. consider EV uh, hybrid and EV. Right. Well, yeah, you so don't. You but it's, who else doesn't? Like people who drive Volts. I, I saw this in the Sunnyvale um, Underground, you know, in, in downtown Sunnyvale, and all the spots were taken by Volts until they made it so that after a certain amount of time, the price went up. But they're like, well, it's an EV. I bought it because it's an extender. I might drive to and from work every day and just use the 40 miles of range. Right. But I want to be able to go out of town. It's still technically an EV for what I use the purpose for. You might define it otherwise, but yeah. they don't. Well, it's, it's like it's like I said, subject to interpretation. It's what you what you think it well, means. Well, maybe this is also. I want to encourage these plug-in Prius owners to see how cool it is to drive electric all the time. And now that they've gotten over their charger age, maybe they'll buy a real electric that's car. The next yeah, it's encouragement, not not blocking. That's a clear definition. Well, it's an acronym, but it's not terribly clear. Yeah. Yeah. Does does this problem even with the 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 app, does this problem become intractable if all of a sudden fifty or sixty or seventy percent of the workforce starts driving EVs and you know Yahoo still only has fifty chargers, a hundred chargers? Yeah. I mean, do you really expect companies to install chargers on a one for one or close to one for one basis? Uh, as yeah, the option I mean, grows. You don't need one for one, you need about one to two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's, two or three that's right. Well, lot, you know, it, it's, it's not in our corporate, uh, you know, declaration of independence that they have to provide free charging for us, but we consider it to be a perk of the workplace. So we want to encourage people to work here, you know, make it so it's not just a hassle to plug in your electric car. So At, at the limit, it's, it's no different than, than coffee or parking spot. Right. right. I think the problem is we're at a, at a sort of a the, near to start, still near to starting conditions of trying to make it special. But I think yeah. several important things that you know are when I mean, we talk about you know who's you know who should get to use the spot. I think one of the questions that the that, that, that plaintiffs often forget is is you need the the, the the provider of the space needs to define for themselves and, and, and in some sense externalize why am I providing this charging and what is the reason. For because if you don't understand that, then it makes it very difficult to come up with a policy, you know, and a program that drives toward what you're trying to do. And whether it's a perk, whether it's a you try to encourage, you know, electric miles, whatever the source of the electric miles, or whether it's you know, what whatever it is, you need to understand that because that that yeah. that helps decide, you know, you know, enforcement and tools and whatever that you're gonna do. Yeah. Exactly. So don't uh, over engineer the problem. <laughs> Just try to make it a nicer place for people to work. Thank you for joining right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so just the only last thing is uh, Bob. Yeah. Um, I have an easy charge. No, Bob, come up here. So, oh. so the people on the, on the web can hear you as well. Okay. Not just <clears throat> locally. I have an EV, self-made EV charging problem. The rally that we had at the Anson College, uh, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, they had a booth there and they're encouraging, incentivizing people to put in EV chargers. The problem is I'm on the second funding and what they changed is the minimum grant has to be $10,000. I can't come up with spending ten thousand dollars. I can only come up with six. So either you spend ten, or you get nothing. So I'm in a nothing stage. I own a small commercial property in Gilroy that I'm getting rid of the lawn, and I'm going to step out of place for one EV parking place and one charge um, that only comes up to six. Oh, and, and photovoltaics on the roof to cover that. And that only comes up to six thousand dollars. So my alternative is. I've got to find another person that maybe we can group together and go make applications so that we go over $10,000. The catch is it has to be open to the public 24-7. It can be on private property and it can be on public property. 
I tried to get the city of Gilroy interested in it and just you know, they talk is cheap. Uh, and, and with them, I would have, we're on funding, I, I understand number two, by the time Gilroy gets around, so it'll probably be funding number seven or eight. You know, we're talking years of talking. So does anybody know anybody else who is interested in doing that? I understand what, there's somebody in Morgan Hill, West, do you remember who was at a meeting? He wanted to do it to tell. One of the first I can think of is Sven, but he already did it, so. I know, I'm just saying he already did this thing, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I don't want to go through the whole thing again. Yeah. Okay. You know anybody in Morgan Hill who wants to install an EV charger for the public? On the spot? It goes on public or private property. But it has to be open to the public 24 7. Okay. That's my problem. It's a proverbial rock and hard spot. This is the end of the long road. Yeah. Oh, no. It, it, it has to be on, it cannot be on private property. It has to be on public property or commercial property. So I guess the, the piece of property I was in is a, is a, it's a 1920-year California bungalow that has been trans converted into a commercial property. It has office spaces you know, for farmers insurance and blinds and, and, and that sort of thing. So that's the public, quasi-public property where you can drive up and plug in, go into your business and plug in, drive off. Okay, so I'll I'm sorry. Is the fall to uh, well, your, your question is fall to You get three thousand dollars per charger. Three thousand plus three thousand plus whatever it takes is nine thousand. That's under ten. Would you like to build? I don't have. I don't have room. I don't have room to put even a second one. That's the problem. Are you talking about a local laundry? Well, yeah. That's that's the problem. Anyways, uh, thank you all for coming. I, I just want to mention you the teachers. So we have purple ones and the like, gray ones in the back. So the purple are the rally and the gray is the ice age. Sure. Uh, but those are volunteer shirts. We only have the volunteers. I know, but I was wondering what yours is. I didn't bring them, sorry. Didn't have room in my car. Um, I won't forget my house. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up because I got to go. So. No, but later, later. So, thank you all for coming. Uh, all right, so I'm not sure. Also, the old ones I know, I'll take everyone off the board.